In this video, I will explain to you how Awingo can be integrated with an external identity provider like uh, Azure AD, um, Okta, ADFS, Google. So any external IDP which is SAML or OpenID uh, Connect compatible. In the next video, uh, I will show you how once you are uh, what we call pre-authenticated, so once you have been doing your authentication against an Active Directory, can then do full single sign-on in Awingu. So in this first video, we will discuss how you can uh, link your Awingu to an external IDP and make sure that you can only log into Awingu after being authorized by your external identity provider. And then in the second video, we will explain to you how you can remove the Windows password from the Active Directory uh, and uh, replace that with a full single sign-on experience. Um, as explained uh, uh, before, um, what we need to do uh, is... Uh, configure Awingu as an uh, IDP uh, as an IDP client from an external IDP. So uh, to do this, uh, what we uh, need to do is, uh, of course, open the system settings and uh, go to the user connector. And in the user connector, you will see that there is a section which is called federated authentication. So this should not be uh, confused with the workspace identity provider. That's something completely different. So um, if you want to attach uh, Awingu as a client behind an external IDP, you have to work with the federated uh, authentication uh, system. By default, this is uh, disabled. So uh, in a first step, what we need to do is uh, configure the pre-authentication. I said before, pre-authentication is the part where we will replace the, the login, where you provide username and password to Awingu. And then Awingo connects to, an to the Active Directory over LDAPS to validate if the username and the password is correct by, an, uh, by a call to an external service. In the example I will show you, uh, we we're going to set it up with uh, Azure AD. So there are two parts. Uh, the first thing I need to do is uh, configure the Azure part. So uh, to configure the Azure part, you need to go to your uh, Azure Active Directory and uh, open the uh, app registration uh, feature. And in there, you need to create a, a new uh, entry. Um, in my case, I have, I have already done this. So this is the uh, SAML IDP for, uh, for my Awingu. And um, later on in the Awingu configuration, we will need a few uh, values from in here. So the, the first thing we would need is the, the client ID. So this is uh, something we would need in the configuration of Awingu. And then the second thing we need is the um, XML file, so the, uh, the, the details of the, the SAML connection. So this is something you can find under endpoints. And over there, you find the Federation Metadata data document. Uh, there are two ways Awingu can uh, handle this. Either you download it and then we upload it later on in Awingu, or we can just link to the uh, web uh, link in here. Uh, so these are the, the values that Awingu needs. On the opposite, so um, Azure Sites or your external identity provider also needs a few things. So uh, these are the redirect URLs. So what I have done is I have uh, added my uh, uh, remoteawingu.com as one of the uh, redirect URLs in this uh, configuration. So that means that if Awingu uh, connects to the IDP, then uh, uh, Azure knows that this is uh, okay. Um, when you're adding your um, URL in, in here, uh, don't forget to add the uh, API SAML uh, extension. So it's uh, your, your name of your Awingu appliance slash API slash SAML. So this is the, 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 the part that we have to do on the, uh, on the Azure AD uh, in, in this case. Um, if you're working with uh, ADFS or, for example, with Google as an uh, external IDP, please have a look in our uh, admin guide. In our admin guide, we're explaining you the, the details of those uh, specific uh, services. But basically, any SAML or OpenID uh, compatible uh, external identity provider can uh, be used. Um, on the Awingu side, what we need to do is then go to the uh, user connector. Uh, in the federated authentication, say that we would like to do pre-authentication. Uh, the protocol in this case is, uh, is SAML. And then we have to specify the, the values. So uh, my entity ID is the identifier from, uh, from, uh, from Azure. Uh, be careful um, when using Azure AD as a, as, a, as a service provider, you have to put the, the you have to put in front of your uh, entity ID SPN double point. So this is not something you have to do with other identity providers, but for Azure, apparently, this is uh, needed. The entity ID itself, it's, uh, it's called SPN double point and then your, uh, your, uh, your numbers. Uh, in our case, we are going to work with, an, uh, with a URL. So we, are not, we, we didn't download the XML file. We upload, we, we've made the link directly. 
Uh, please be careful with this. Um, if you're specifying the URL, the Awingo appliance needs to be able to access that URL. So if for some reason your firewall is configured to not allow um, this, then uh, it will not uh, work. Um, the last thing we need to configure in here is the, uh, the claims that Awingo will use. So Awingo will do a mapping from two of your values from your uh, identity provider to uh, values in Awingo. The first one is the username. Uh, so um, from Azure, we, we will use the claim name for that. Uh, but for other identity providers, that could be like something like email or, uh, or any other value. Basically, this is the mapping between your uh, external identity and your users on the Active Directory where Awingo connects uh, to. And then uh, the display name, this is the name which will be visible, uh, for example, in, in some of the pop-ups in, uh, in Awingo. So here we're, we're using the, the given name uh, claim. Um, Please check with your IDP how those claims look like. So for example, for Azure AD, these are claims which look like um, uh, URLs, uh, but for some other identity providers, it could be like a very short uh, uh, word like name. Uh, so this is something you need to check with your uh, identity provider you're using. Uh, as said before, if you, if you go to the admin manual, we have uh, written out documentation for some of these uh, more common uh, identity providers. And then the last thing you need to specify is the uh, workspace URL. So uh, in this case, uh, this is a remote Awingo.com. So this is the public uh, DNS name you need to uh, specify. Uh, once finished, click on uh, apply uh, and the configuration uh, should be uh, applicable. Uh, one thing to double check before you test it is in the, um, uh, in the domain settings. Uh, go to your uh, domain uh, configuration and also make sure that your uh, host header is, uh, is filled in. So if this is not the case, Awingo will not know it needs to reload the configuration and redirect you to the uh, external uh, identity provider. So let's go uh, incognito mode and let's uh, see if it works. So if I go to um, uh, remote uh, awingo.com, uh, I normally should be automatically redirected to my uh, identity provider. Over here, I have to uh, identify with my uh, username and my password. Uh, our Azure AD is uh, coupled to um, Azure MFA, so I'm taking my smartphone, approving the connection, providing my fingerprint. And uh, if this is okay, Awingo should normally uh, allow me to, uh, to log into the system right now. So this is, this is working. So pre-authentication is, uh, is, uh, is set up. As you can see, it's still asking for a, a password before I can, um, before I can uh, continue. Uh, this is uh, the, 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 the pre-authentication part. So as explained, if you, got, if you want to get rid of that, uh, of that password, that's uh, what I'm going to explain in the second video where we will enable full single sign-on. So, uh, as you can see, in, uh, in my case, everything went fine and my uh, pre-identification was working automatically from the first time. But uh, there is one thing I still need to explain to you, and this is what uh, and, and how can I still access the system if something is wrongly configured. So for that, there is uh, something you need to know. Um, if you um, go to uh, your URL and then do slash login, question mark, no, pre out, and then a capital P and a capital A, you can still get the uh, login prompt. So if you do uh, this, uh, the special parameter, uh, you still get the uh, login prompt. And of course, you will not be able to log anymore with, the, with a normal user, but with your built-in uh, user, uh, you're still allowed to, uh, to connect to the, to the system. So if something goes wrong with that built-in user, you're, you're still able to, uh, to log in to uh, Awingo.